live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. This is not the dot-com situation. We have problems with people having invested in business plans for which there was no reality. The people building fiber optic cable for which there was no need. Homes that are occupied may see an ebb and flow in the price at a certain percentage level, but you're not going to see the collapse that you see when people talk about a bubble. And so those of us on our committee in particular will continue to push for home ownership. All right, folks, Barney Frank, who, by the way, will be back uh, testifying, uh, actually testified yesterday, four years now, uh, Dodd-Frank, and uh, here to talk about what Dodd-Frank has meant and educate those of you who don't know what Dodd-Frank is, is uh, Sherry Olson, real estate attorney and uh, pundit and finance and development director at the Carnegie Group. Hello, Sherry. Good morning, Steve. Good to talk to you. Uh, all right, so let's let's uh, talk a little bit about it. For those who don't know uh, what uh, Dodd-Frank uh, was all about and has been all about for the past four years. Why don't you tell them? Well, sure. Uh, Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act is exactly what it sounds like. It was designed to reform issues on Wall Street, primarily the too-big-to-fail concept where financial institutions were so large that if they failed, they would bring down uh, the entire system, uh, and also to protect consumers. So in the context of real estate and housing, it essentially tried to do that, or is still trying to do that, uh, by addressing the types of loans that that are provided to homeowners, the fees that are charged, and the disclosures that have to be given. And you say that uh, so far over the course of time it has done more harm than good. I'm sure he, uh, Barney Frank would disagree with you, but uh, w w w why, why do you say that? Well, yeah, and I happen to be a huge fan of Barney Frank, but I think he, he missed You're the, the mark okay. on this one. Yeah, he missed the mark on this okay. one. Um, primarily, the, the biggest uh, development that came out of Dodd-Frank in housing was the qualified mortgage rule, which became effective at the beginning of this year, back in January. January. Uh, and essentially what that did is it defined what was called a qualified mortgage. So in order to be a qualified mortgage, for example, uh, the product couldn't have certain risky adjustable uh, rate features. It couldn't be one of those liar loans, so it had to be documented. Uh, it couldn't have negative amortization. And there were other requirements, too. The fees couldn't exceed 3 percent and so on and so forth. The goal was to protect consumers from these risky subprime loans that allegedly caused the crisis. The problem is that it also cut a lot of bar borrowers out of uh, the potential for getting a mortgage loan. So a lot so of qualified uh, uh, customers, absolutely. correct? Absolutely. So between 15 and 20 percent of folks who would have qualified for a loan before qualified mortgage don't qualify now. The other thing it did is it really spooked a lot of the banks, and it increased the costs. So regulatory compliance costs have gone through the roof, and banks obviously are very hesitant about offering mortgages, want to make sure that they know that they're, what they're doing is a qualified mortgage so that they receive the benefits under that. Well, wh wh wasn't one of the problems of the whole house housing crisis and, and some would argue what, what, what eventually brought down uh, the financial markets uh, was giving mortgages to people who were in no way qualified. As a matter of fact, I hearken back to HUD Secretary Andrew Cuomo at the time announcing this big $2 billion settlement with the Texas Bank and he uh, said that uh, because they were accused of not uh, giving loans to uh, minorities, he never said if they deserved the loans, he just said that they were giving uh, turning down more minority applicants than whites uh, and now they were going to give it to them and he said, and I have this on tape and I played it over and over over the course of the years. Will there be more defaults on these loans? Yes, but it's the right thing to do. Wasn't the blackmailing of the banks into giving loans to people who didn't deserve them based on race or ethnicity or other circumstances, wasn't that what prompted all this in the first place? That was sort of the beginning of the end, Steve, but here's the thing. What really pushed us over the edge was Wall Street investors and wanting the return uh, that these subprime loans would give them. I mean, they were pushing the banks for more and more product to securitize and sell on the street to investors. Uh, and once the money became readily available, of course, you had folks on the front end, the loan originators, who were very eager to earn their fees by originating those loans. And of course, average consumers, some of whom really should have known better, but many of whom really relied on their mortgage brokers or bankers at the front line to tell them what they could afford. Uh, so there were really sort of a series of things that went wrong in this situation. And where are we now? Now, yeah, I always put, to me, I mean, unless there's something illegal going on uh, with the bankers or whatever. I mean, it, to me, it's up to the consumer. You know, I mean, I, I, I've refinanced several times, and I, I've, I bought 
two properties over the years, sold one, and you know, I, I take responsibility. I know what I can afford. I wouldn't go into something, uh, I wouldn't even go into a, a mortgage that uh, <clears throat> has an arm or whatever that would change. I wanna know what I'm paying. So you gotta be an educated consumer on one hand, but also have the banks now gone back to where what got us into this trouble in the first place, giving loans again to notwithstanding everything you said here uh, about qualified people being turned away and banks not wanting to give mortgages as much and all that, but aren't they now saying you don't need income verification in many instances and you don't have to put 20% down and we're getting back into that same mess that we, that got us into the big mess, no? Right, well that's the irony of qualified mortgage and also of changes at the FHA. FHA has tightened their standards. They've also uh, recently require, started requiring mortgage insurance throughout the entire life of the loan because you'll recall a couple of months ago they went to Congress and borrowed money now they need to shore up their reserves to, to pay that back and the way they're doing it like I said is charging mortgage insurance for the entire life of the loan which makes no sense because mortgage insurance should be tied to the risk the risk goes down once people pay their loan balance down so essentially new borrowers are paying for mistakes of the old borrowers uh, yes I do agree that consumers need to keep themselves educated primarily that's going to be our best defense uh, but, you know, again, the problem we're seeing now is the reemergence, like you said, of these new subprime mortgage products. Because the bottom line is someone who wants to buy a home at the end of the day is not going to not buy a home because they can't get a, an FHA loan or a qualified mortgage. They're going to fall prey to these subprime loans again. Yeah, well, I don't know how they're allowed to, to exist. So where, where are we headed? Where's the housing uh, market headed? I mean, I, I think the latest uh, figures that came out yesterday, maybe, or uh, exist, is existing home sales went up. Um, they See, that seems to be a trend, but w what's the health of, the, of that market right now? Well, that's a great question, and here's the thing. There are two things that are really holding back econ uh, housing, and we have to remember that housing has an impact on all of us, even if we're happily situated in our own home and not particularly worried about who else can afford one. Uh, the ripple effects are huge. So right now we're dealing still with inventory shortages, and there are three reasons for that. Number one, we've got a lot of folks who might move up to a bigger home, but they've got what we're calling rate lock-in because they refinanced at, like, you referenced it, maybe three and a half percent, they don't want to lose their rate, so they're staying put. We've also got a bunch of folks, maybe close to nine million people who are still underwater in their mortgage. Almost 40 percent of people in this country who have a mortgage actually don't have enough equity to sell their home. Right. So that's tying up inventory. And then the biggie, Steve, which is having huge impacts on our economy and GDP, so go ahead. is yeah. construction. We're just not building enough homes for the growing population. Yeah. All right. Listen, very fascinating topic and uh, uh, very interesting uh, and a great explanation. Explanations, uh, making it easily understandable for even people like me. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, Sherry. Thank Take you care. very much. All right, uh, folks, uh, we are going to uh, come back and uh, we are going to continue with the Steve Malsberg Show right here on Newsmax Television. Don't go away.